the Pittsburgh Pirates are ready to motor into the Motor City for two games against the Detroit Tigers. You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you heard the intro. Welcome back to Locked On Pirates, everybody. My name is Ethan Smith, your host of the Locked On Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates every single day. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan or at Locked On Pirates for all of your news, analysis, opinions, and reactions to everything going on in the world of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Folks, as always, we have wonderful sponsors on the Locked On Pirates podcast and can't thank them enough every single day. And if you're trying to get to a Pirates game this season and see these buckos, especially the hundo boys, as Pat McAfee would call them, make sure you use Game Time and download the Game Time app today and use that code Locked On MLB. We'll talk about Game Time a little bit later in today's show and it is tuesday may 28th we are almost through the second full month of the mlb season it honestly feels like the season just started yesterday it really does it feels like this like we were just talking about spring training and going into the series against the miami marlins to begin the year and the pirates starting nine and two now here we are. We are with the Pittsburgh Pirates at 25 and 29 on Tuesday, May 28th, and they will be rolling into the Motor City to take on the Detroit Tigers, who are an interesting matchup for this team. If we remember the last time that these teams played, the Pittsburgh Pirates obviously hosted that one. It was a two game set in the Jim Leland Cup. Winning the first game, losing the second game, obviously a blown save from David Bednar was the leading cause for the loss in that one. And then you kind of saw things kind of teeter off from that hot start that we saw from the Pittsburgh Pirates, especially after beating a very solid Baltimore Orioles team in your home series opener. So these two teams are very different now, and I don't think that anybody would really disagree with that. Uh, obviously, the Pirates in that series had Jack Sawinski. They had Henry Davis. They had a lot of other guys. Rowdy Telez was playing more. Um, Jose Hernandez was not here. And now for the Tigers, I mean, you're looking at this team just initially, and this is the team, obviously, that the Pirates can beat. And the Pirates have floated around 500 for quite a bit now. They've been under 500, obviously, for the better part of a couple weeks, obviously due to that big losing streak that they had, um, losing to the A's and the Giants and all those other teams that they were losing to. But Tarek Skubal, folks, that's the guy that the Pirates will face tonight in Detroit. And this is a guy in Skubal who has really cemented himself as one of the best pitchers, not only in the American League, but he cemented himself as one of the best pitchers in baseball this year. Uh, 2 2 5 ERA, 60 innings pitched, 72 strikeouts, a .85 whip, strong throwing lefty from Hayward, California. He, he's going to be a tough out. He's pitched in 10 games. You look at his last couple of games now in his last start against the Kansas City Royals, another young and upcoming team, much like the Pittsburgh Pirates. He did struggle a little bit. Six hits allowed, four earned runs, and five innings. Two uh, bases on balls, obviously two uh, walks there. Six strikeouts. He's had six or more strikeouts in his last three starts. Obviously had a very good start against Arizona and Houston. Those prior two starts has had a pretty solid month of May, if you ask me as well. A 309 ERA in the month of May has not allowed more than two earned runs all in except that one start has allowed one or two home runs as well in the month of May. But Scooble, again, still one of those guys that you look at and you say, okay, 27 years of age, he's coming into his prime. He's become one of the best pitchers in baseball. And this is going to be an interesting matchup for this Pittsburgh Pirates team, but they will have one of the hundo boys in Jared Jones pitching tonight. Jared Jones, obviously, going into this one against the Detroit Tigers with a 3.05 ERA and 68 strikeouts. Nobody on the Detroit Tigers has faced him before. They did not face him in the prior series. And for Scooble, 
Oliveras has had some success against them. Oliveras, of course, being a former Kansas City Royal, saw him quite a bit in 14 at bats, has a 1.071 OPS. Connor Joe, 666 OPS in three at bats. Michael A. Taylor, former AL Central player as well, has seen him 10 times, 400 OPS. Jared Jones in his last start, too. I mean, you look at what we saw uh, over the weekend or last week between the Giants and the Pirates, and the pitching for the Pirates was there as far as starters are concerned, and it's been there for quite a while now, and that is thanks to a guy like Jared Jones and now, of course, Paul Skeens, who we'll see on Thursday and get into in a minute. But, I mean, Jared Jones, 305 ERA, 0.97 whips, 68 strikeouts. Last couple of outings, he struggled a bit, two earned runs against the Cubs, three earned runs against the Cubs, and three earned runs against the Giants. I think in that last start, Against the San Francisco Giants, he did go just a little bit too long. You started to see that velocity dip a little bit. His command was also dipping a little bit. And you could tell that he was kind of burning out the tank to finish off that six innings of work. But still a 2.88 ERA in the month of May. Has struck out at least four batters in every single game in the month of May. And has done that pretty much all season except one time on April 28th against the San Francisco Giants. And again, he didn't play against the Tigers the first go around. This is a Tigers team that does have some hitters on it right now. Uh, Matt Veerling is coming off of a four uh, home run day or four home run day, four hit day. And you have other guys on this team that kind of scare you, like Kerry Carpenter, Riley Green, Colt Keith, even a Spencer Torkelson. They're, they have some guys that can hit on this roster. And that is a big reason why this Tigers team is competing in the AL Central. And the Pirates will also see an old friend on Wednesday in this series as Paul Skeens will finally uh, face his first American League opponent. He faced the Cubs, obviously, in his first two outings, faced the Giants in his last outing, and now will face his first American League opponent this week against the Detroit Tigers. And it will be against Jack Flaherty. Of course, Jack Flaherty, a former St. Louis Cardinal Pirates fan, should be very familiar with Flaherty, 28 years of age, 3.75 career ERA, 3.84 ERA this year, and 61 innings pitched, 81 strikeouts in that span. And he's had a good go of things as well in the month of May, a 3.60 ERA. Last couple starts, he's not allowed more than three earned runs since April 24th in an outing. Allowed two homers in his last start, though. That was against the Toronto Blue Jays, who the Pirates will see later this week, and have really not met expectations whatsoever. But Flaherty, again, I mean, he's this kind of guy you look at and you say, okay, the Pirates have seen him before. Um, in St. Louis. He was in St. Louis in last season before he was eventually traded to Baltimore, was in St. Louis for his entire career up to that point, now in Detroit. So you do have some guys on this Pirates team that have been here for a little bit that have some experience against him. O'Neill Cruz has a 533 OPS against him in five outings. Riazmani Grandal, former Milwaukee Brewer, has seen a ton of Jack Flaherty in 15 at-bats. Brian Reynolds has seen him 26 times. So an interesting little setup here for this series because I do think that this little two-game set is going to be dictated by pitching. You look at the starting pitchers here and what they have to offer, and the Pittsburgh Pirates obviously throwing arguably their two best guys out there, even though I think Mitch Keller has fully cemented himself again into that top role. Jared Jones and Paul Skeens have been nuts, and nobody's going to deny that whatsoever. And it's almost an expectation. Now, from Pirates fans and everybody alike, that every time the Jared Jones and Paul Skeens go on the mound, they're just going to shove. And we haven't really seen them have an immense amount of struggle yet. We've seen it a little more from Jones uh, struggles to keep the ball in the yard a little bit with the home run ball. But again, the strikeout numbers have been phenomenal and he's been able to work out of a ton of jams throughout his short career so far. Meanwhile, for Paul Skeens, I mentioned it on the Friday show last week when I saw him pitch in person, he only had three strikeouts in his last outing against the giants. And it was an outing where he didn't really have his stuff. He had to work out of multiple jams in that game was able to still get a quality start, only gave up one or run, obviously a no decision based off of everything that happened on that day. But the thing with me that comes down to this is that the Pirates can get after Tarek Skubal, who 
should be a tough out, but the Pirates have pit or played well against left-handed pitching this year. And if they could find a way to get Scooble and Flaherty out of games early and let Jones and Skeens just do their thing, then I think the Pirates have a very good shot of uh, winning this series. You would like to see the offense continue to kind of hand it over uh, like they've been doing lately. You've been seeing the top of the order kind of handle business and hand it over to the bottom of the order, and things have just kind of been rolling along. Thanks a lot to Nick Gonzalez, Brian Reynolds, Connor Joe, and Andrew McCutcheon, who have picked things up a lot as of late. There's a potential that you're getting key Brian Hayes back at some point on this trip. We'll see how that goes. But if the offense can keep scoring runs, especially against these top pitchers, that'll be huge, especially when you have your top pitchers on the mound. Again, you just hope the bullpen – can come into the game and not explode. And I mentioned it on my show yesterday that I think that this is a unit that is struggling right now. I don't think I have to tell you that, but I don't think it's a unit that's going to struggle forever. I think it's a unit that has the potential to still be a top unit in baseball. As I said, all preseason, I think it's a unit in David Bednar and Colin Holderman are going to eventually end up heading Araldis Chapman. Meanwhile, is not going to always blow up in every single outing he has. And some of these other guys are still getting their feet under him. Carmen Majinski, for instance, had that IL stint and really, I don't think he's recovered from it yet. Truthfully, I think missing a good chunk of spring training kind of affected him a little bit. I think it's something that for the Pirates are going to monitor. And you hope that this bullpen can back up Jared Jones and Paul Skeens because I said it last week that you cannot waste these good starts from Jared Jones and Paul Skeens, especially when they're healthy and available to you. Because we're going to start tracking this. Uh, Jim Stam over at Pirates Fan Forum. Um, we were talking about it at the game last week that we were going to start tracking the record that the Pirates have since Paul Skeens was called up because that means you're getting Jared Jones and Paul Skeens pitching usually once or twice a week, maybe three times, depending on the schedule. The schedule's a little wonky this week, obviously, with having so many off days. But those are your keys to victory. Just assume and hope that Jared Jones and Paul Skeens come out and do Jared Jones and Paul Skeens things and just arrive, shove, and leave. Shout out Pittsburgh Clothing Company. And hope the offense continues to do what they've been doing. They've been RBI machines lately. They've been making opportunities and creating them and capitalizing on them, which is something we didn't see a couple weeks ago. And if the bullpen is called upon and needed, just hope that they can come in and just do their job and get a clean outing. That's really what the Pirates need to do, and they're going to look to end May strong as they will not play another game in the month of May until Friday, which will be their final game in the month of May, meaning we will have a May recap because I don't think we'll learn too much about that game on Friday to really look at everything else. So we'll recap the month of May on Friday as well as looking at that Toronto Blue Jays series. And throughout the week, we'll be talking everything Pirates, but we're going to talk about Henry Davis and Jack Sawinski in just a moment here because both of those guys were sent to AAA, and I want to talk about how they've been doing and why it's not a death sentence that these guys are sent down there and getting good playing time. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked On Pirates is brought to you by Stitch Fix. Style so good, you can feel it over at stitchfix.com slash locked on MLB. Because you know that instant confidence boost you get from an outfit that just makes you look really good? That's what you get with Stitch Fix. With Stitch Fix, you get a stylist who understands your style, your size, and your budget, and they do all the shopping for you. It's the easiest way to update your wardrobe this season. All you have to do is easily upgrade your wardrobe this year with a professional stylist that helps you find new on-trend favorites that will work for you. All you have to do is give your st uh, stylist your size, your style, and your budget preferences and order boxes when you want and how you want, no subscription required. And they send five just for you pieces plus outfit recommendations and pro styling advice. Keep what works and send back the rest. Stitch Fix makes it all so easy that I don't even really like the shop, and they save me that time and effort. Plus, I get outfits that make me look good and feel really good. And if you don't love something, 
folks, just send it back. Shipping returns and exchanges at Stitch Fix are always free. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash locked on or slash MLB, sorry, and get $20 off your first fix. That's stitchfix.com slash MLB for $20 off. Stitchfix.com slash MLB. You must redeem that code within seven days of signing up and style so good you could feel it over at stitchfix.com slash MLB. And folks, welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates, every single day. Don't forget to check out Locked On Sports Today, the 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and Amazon Fire TV, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, bringing you analysis from all of your local hosts of the Locked On Podcast Network, including myself, 24-7 every single day so make sure you go check that out it's always fun i play it all the time i watch it all day while i'm doing writing work or doing other things that i'm doing throughout the day again make sure you follow locked on pirates at locked on pirates follow me at mvp underscore ethan make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell on youtube and your audio platform so you know when locked on pirates is coming your way so a big talking point of this season has been the play or lack thereof of Henry Davis and Jack Sawinski, who have both had their multitude of struggles this year, have both been sent down to AAA Indianapolis to figure some things out. And these are guys that you were really banking on being a part of your core, guys that you were hoping coming into 2024 that were going to be a big reason why you were winning baseball games. They were going to be complimentary pieces to Brian Reynolds and key Brian Hayes and O'Neill Cruz and all the other guys that make this Pirates team what they are. And that just hasn't happened yet. Henry Davis, obviously we'll start with him 68 at bats in major league baseball this year, a one six or a one sixty two average uh, zero home runs, four RBIs of four eighty six OPS, just not really getting stuff done just yet. But you also look at what he's been able to do in AAA, where he's been for a couple weeks now. We saw him go down uh, to Indianapolis a couple weeks ago just to really work on things. There are some things that you would like to see Henry Davis work on. You want to see him take the ball opposite field a little bit more. He was pull- he was just not putting the ball opposite field really whatsoever when he was here, and he wasn't hitting the ball that hard either. We kind of saw slivers of that in spring training. We saw a little bit of it near the end of the year last year. Obviously, last year was just kind of a weird year for Henry Davis trying to learn a whole new position at right field and also trying to navigate an MLB schedule and dealing with minor injuries along the way. He's done well since he went to AAA Indianapolis this year, though. 297 average and 64 at-bats, six home runs, 14 RBIs, and a 1.116 OPS. So you do like what you've seen from him so far. And what I find even more intriguing is he has already hit six home runs down there and 14 RBIs. And a lot of people will probably say, well, it's triple A. He's a four A player. That's just always what he's going to be. No, he was one of the fastest number one overall selections to ever come up to the major league level. And you could kind of see that you could kind of tell that he was that kind of guy that he could come up that quickly. But it was clear, especially throughout the beginning of this year, that he needs to work on more things. You'd like to see the bat speed come up a little bit more. You want to see him induce more hard contact. You want to see him continue to find a way to get the ball to the opposite part of the field. You want to see him use that power element that we know he all has. And he's done that so far in AAA. Again, six homers. He has six doubles down there already. So 12 extra base hits in uh, 17 hits. He has 12 of those for extra bases or 19 hits. Sorry. Those are the kind of things you want to see from Henry Davis. And also remember when the issue with Henry Davis was defense. Well, folks, before he left major league baseball and went to AAA via the call or the send down, He was one of six catchers in Major League Baseball to have a 100% blocking percentage behind the plate. Defense is not the issue with Henry Davis right now. And I see a lot of people saying, too, about Joey Bart's injury. Bring him back up. Bring him back up. I just don't think he's ready yet. I think they need to give him some more time. 
Let him work on the things that he needs to work on and what the coaching staff thinks he might need to work on. Let him continue to get his confidence back up because I honestly think that's the biggest part of what's going on right now is that when he was down there or up here, his confidence was shot. He wasn't seeing the ball at all. It was looking like a golf ball rather than a baseball or a beach ball when you're hitting the ball really well. And you want Henry Davis to succeed because then you have Andy Rodriguez coming back next year as well. And we still have question marks about him also. And if neither of those guys succeed, you got some major question marks behind the plate. And I'm not going to go there yet because obviously both of those guys are very young and still have a lot of time to figure it out. And I do trust that Henry Davis will figure it out purely because of his work ethic and two, I think he's just that talented of a baseball player. And I think his time in AAA will help him there. Now, do I know how long he'll be in AAA? Don't really know that, that, that answer for you. I wish I could tell you, but he's going to be there for a pretty extended period of time. I'd say once he gets around 150 to 200 plate appearances, that's probably when you'll start flirting with bringing him back up as long as injuries permit. And, Hopefully he comes back and he shows off some of what he's been working on. Meanwhile, for Jack Sawinski, he's only gotten four at-bats in AAA so far, 250 average, but we know what the problem is with Jack. He has these long stretches where he just cannot hit a baseball. He wasn't really showing off the power all that much this year at all. Uh, 138 at-bats, a 174 average, four homers, 13 RBIs, a 565 OPS is just unacceptable. Now, a lot of people joke and call him baby Schwarber, AKA me. I call him baby Kyle Schwarber, but here's the thing. Kyle Schwarber may not have the average either. and may strike out a good bit, but he does produce when he needs to. We haven't really seen it from Jack. We saw the grand slam earlier this year uh, against the Philadelphia Phillies. He's had his moments. We know that, but you're talking about a guy right now that has a 209 career average, a 729 career OPS, 49 career home runs. And in the minor leagues, he has 59 career home runs at a 729 OPS exactly. So he has the exact same OPS in the uh, minors over the course of his career that he has in the majors. That is interesting. That is an interesting thing. Now, the issues for Jack one, the fastball kills him sometimes. Uh, the off speed or the off speed kills him. Sorry. He does do pretty well against fastballs, but the off speed does seem to be an issue. And I didn't really understand how the Pirates were navigating Jack Sawinski this season because he wasn't really playing all that much uh, against lefties at all, which I understand, but you also want to see that too. You want to see if he can find a way to be a plus lefty lefty hitter. O'Neill Cruz gets to do it all the time. Why can't Jack Sawinski do it? And it felt like any time that Jack Sawinski was getting hot, the Pirates just weren't playing him consistently. And I, I continuously made the argument that if you're not going to play Jack Sawinski consistently, send him down to AAA and let him figure some things out. That's what they've done here. And the kid has potential. He's a power threat when he's on. We've seen him be on before. We all remember Father's Day a couple of years ago against the Giants with three homers. We've seen the best of Jack Sawinski. We've seen the absolute worst of Jack Sawinski. Both of these guys have their things to work on. Both of these guys will eventually be back. Both of these guys can be contributors to the Pittsburgh Pirates and what they're trying to do. All of those things can be true. There are other things that can be true too. They could struggle mightily for the entire year. They could never figure it out. It's the beauty of baseball. We don't know what these guys are going to be through the entirety of their career, but you're looking at two guys that are 24 and 25. These guys have all the time, <clears throat> excuse me, in the world to figure this out. And I think they will. I think Jack will eventually find a way to find a balance between the average, the OPS, and the strikeouts. I think that's what you really want to see from him. And Henry Davis, you just want to see him get back to his hitting ways that we've seen at Louisville and in the minor leagues before he was initially called up. That's what you want to see from these guys in AAA, and that's what I think we'll continue to see. We'll obviously keep monitoring Jack Sawinski and uh, Henry Davis in the minor leagues, seeing as, again, I think they are integral parts of what we're seeing in um, the Pirates' future plans. And I think that that's what we want to see. Check out the Indian, uh, the Indianapolis team, by the way. They are a fun team to watch, especially when the Pirates are off. Speaking of going back to the Pirates, it's past Memorial Day. 
And that's usually when you could start kind of standings watching a little bit. We still have a lot of baseball, but we could kind of get an idea of what's going on in each division and what's going on specifically in the NL Central. I have an interesting take about how these teams are going to handle things moving forward right after this. Folks, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app today and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Don't forget the terms apply. But Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch, and with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. On last minute deals, you could save up to 60% off when buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. You get all in pricing. All you have to do is toggle the all in pricing feature and show the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. And Game Time's lowest price guarantee will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. And the Game Time ticket coverage allows your purchase to be covered with the most flexible customer service policy policy in the ticketing industry. So download the Game Time app, create an account and use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N M L B for $20 off and download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. And folks, welcome back to the final segment of today's episode of Locked On Pirates here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates every day. Gotta love the uh, the, thro- the throat stuff sometimes. <clears throat> Gotta love it. The weather's getting warmer. Baseball's getting in full swing. The NBA and the NHL are almost done. Baseball is about to be the center of attention, folks. And right now, for the Pittsburgh Pirates, the center of attention is staying in contention in this National League Central. And I've been listening and kind of, you know, being very intricate about these other shows, uh, Locked on Brewers, Locked on Cubs. We've obviously had the Locked on Cubs guys on uh, already this year, Locked on Cardinals and Locked on Reds. And there's one common theme between myself and those four shows here on the Locked On Podcast Network that I want to talk about is that when you look at this division, and for those that don't know at the time of recording, the Brewers are 31 and 22 in lead, Cubs 27 and 27, Cardinals 25 and 27, Pirates 25 and 29, Cincinnati 24 and 30. Cincinnati is in last and seven and a half games back. And it's it's the day after Memorial Day. There's still plenty of time to figure this out for all of these teams. So then you go, and I think it's interesting, because then you go and look around the rest of the National League right now. Phillies are well ahead in the NL East at six games. Atlanta, six games back. And then the rest of that division is a dumpster fire. Uh, Washington's 24 and 28, still kind of in that zone. The Mets have fallen apart, and the Marlins are going to sell. Then you look at the NL West. The Dodgers, 33 and 22. Giants, Padres, and Arizona, all two games apart. Colorado, going to sell. So it gets interesting because right now, Cincinnati is three and a half games out of the wild card. Pirates, two and a half. Cardinals, one and a half. Cubs, a half game. So it's still very early, and all these teams are bunched together. But I think it's going to make things interesting when we get around the trade deadline. Folks, I don't expect a lot to change here with how this NL Central is. If I had to make a prediction, I would say that the Cardinals will probably fall off a little bit. I think Cincinnati will come up a little bit, which we've seen lately. Cincinnati was definitely struggling, but they're starting to get healthy again, and their pitching has been very good. And the Cubs and Brewers are going to be the Cubs and Brewers. For the Pirates, I think it's all about getting over 500 again, which is something they can very much do. They could even do it this week, potentially. 
or at least get close to it. And when you look at this division, I just truly don't think anybody's going to fall enough out of this division to warrant being a seller. And I think that you're going to see that specifically in this division alone. The NL East, I do think the Nationals, Mets, and Marlins are going to be sellers. And in the NL West, same thing. The only team there that's going to sell is Colorado, but I think those top four teams are all going to buy. And if you're saying that, and let's just fast forward and say it's July, it's the all-star break. And the standings are the exact same with the exact number of games back. Seven and a half games, folks, that's not bad for the division. But I do also think that when you're just looking at the division, you also have to factor in the wild card situation, which I just brought up, where Cincinnati might be last place in the NL Central, but they're only two and a half games out of the wild card. And even those Mets who I talked to you about and the Nationals, Nationals are two and a half alongside the Pirates. The Mets are four and a half out. So there's still plenty of baseball to be left and plenty to be answered here. But it is hard for me to suggest that any team in this NL Central is going to sell because I do think out, I do think right now it's the most winnable division in baseball for any of those teams. A lot of people would have said that about the AL Central. Right now the Guardians are running away with that alongside the Royals and the Twins are kind of trailing behind them. And then the AL West, I don't know what's going on over there, but that division will figure itself out. The AL East is going to be a two-horse race between New York and Baltimore. The NL West is the Dodgers division to lose, and the NL East is the Phillies division to lose. Milwaukee is an interesting team. The Cubs are an interesting team that the Pirates have already played well this year. They haven't played St. Louis and Cincinnati yet, but they will do that in June. And I do think that, again, as a lot of us said on the NL Central preview before the season started, that this is a division that you can make a valid argument any team in this division can win, this NL Central. And I hope the Pirates treat that that way, especially with Jones and Skies, because I think they have the best starting rotation in the division. And other teams are going to buy too. So why not do it earlier? That might be a topic we talk about later as we exit the month of May. But folks, thank you so much for tuning into the Locked On Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates every day. Again, follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan or at Locked On Pirates for all of your news, analysis, opinions, and reactions to everything going on in the world of the Pittsburgh Pirates. This show is free and available to you every Monday through Friday here on the Locked On Podcast Network on YouTube and all of your audio platforms. Check that out. Have a beautiful rest of your Tuesday, and until then, see you on the flip side.